Hello! Huh. I am the ultra supreme eccentrical guardian master of the crucial mysteries at the esoteric majestic order of Bottlenose. I'm here on location in the <laughs> natural location where where uh, Beak Child lives. Uh, this is the area around his home, uh, as you'll see here. Uh, this is where uh, Beak Child lives and plays. And uh, this is where he taught me. Uh, this is where he began teaching me the mystery of the diamonds <clears throat> uh, as he played out in the yard. Uh, probably better turn where uh, the sun can see me better. Uh, if you look, I'm wearing my shirt. Uh, here is uh, the owl. Um, here, great horned owl. Uh, paying tribute to uh, Monk or Lord. Um, some people, like my son, um, may have seen videos of him. He calls uh, him Beak Child. Um, and a friend of mine uh, but refers to him as Beak Child. But he's actually Monk or Lord. Uh, he, is the, he is the mystical owl that sent his astral projection into the room of Johannes McGillicuddy around 500 years ago. Somewhere in Europe, we think. We're not entirely sure. Um, anyway, so I'll just tell you this, what this is about. Uh, this channel, this YouTube channel... Uh, is dedicated to the mystical teachings of Bottle Nose. Um, it is the official YouTube channel for the Esoteric Majestic Order of Bottle Nose, uh, spelled B-H-A-T-L-N-H-O-S. Uh, it is not a dolphin, and um, and for short, we just call it the Emob, E-M-O-B, Esoteric Majestic Order of Bottle Nose. And I am the Ultra Supreme Eccentrical Guardian Master of the Crucial Mysteries. I am the, uh, the chief person, uh, human anyway, if you want to say it that way, uh, in charge of uh, this, uh, this organization, or some people might regard it as a secret society, or a cult, or <laughs> whatever it is that they see things, whatever. But it's... I guess it's similar in concept to Freemasonry, although we are not Freemasons, and uh, none of us that I know of have uh, have been Freemasons, especially myself. Um, although I'm, uh, I hold very positive views uh, regarding Freemasonry. I think it's very fascinating, uh, very very interesting, and overall a pretty good thing. I mean, it, it's really difficult to explain, and that's perhaps why Freemasons don't really explain much about it. Uh, to other people who are not Freemasons, and not to say that that you know it's dark or secretive or evil or anything like that. It's just think about the amount of effort. This this is the way I'm thinking about. It. Look at the amount of effort it would take to explain it to somebody in a way that they could understand. And if you see my eyes look away, I'm just looking at the screen of my tablet because I'm recording this with my tablet. Anyway, uh, for example, computer science. You know, it, it's it's no secret how a microprocessor um, processes data, but yet, here comes a car, and it's no secret, it's also no secret how a uh, analog to digital converter functions and that sort of thing, but if I were to explain the, 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 um, the fine details of how these technologies function, the question remains, would you even want to listen? And that's what we're dealing with here. There's a significant amount of effort that is going to be needed to articulate this stuff accurately. And I don't think Freemasons really, you know, want to, you know, just spend their time doing that. Or does the public even want to hear it? I mean, I could tell you the details of how a computer, um, you know, language, um, uh, you know, compiler functions. But would you want to hear it? That's what we're getting at. So this is why some of these things remain a secret. And that's exactly... What we're getting at here with the mystical teachings of Bottlenose. I mean, most people don't want to know this stuff, and you know they'll think of it as weird or whatever, and well, that's fine. So I'm going to tell you the uh, the reason why I'm uh, why I'm doing this. I got I got a shrine that I created uh, dedicated to the mystical teachings of Bottlenose. Uh, there's a lot of owls in this shrine. Uh, there are diamonds, uh, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, it was about 500 years ago, somewhere in Europe, 
And there was a man named Johannes McGillicuddy, spelled J-O-H-A-N-N-E-S, M-A-C-G-I-L-L-Y, C-U-D-D-Y. And he was basically the unsung hero of the Discovery Age. He was basically a person that history tried to forget. Okay? Um, you know, one night he was trying to get to sleep, and it was a hot summer night um, in his house, and he had the window open. Like I said, he's trying to cool the place down. And then <clears throat> um, he finally got to sleep, finally. I don't know what it's like. Uh, so anyway, he finally got to sleep. And that's, uh, he said, sometime during the night he was visited by some kind of mystical owl that, uh, that was emanating some kind of blue or blue-violet light from it. And it was just kind of shimmering down these diamonds. And... He said that it sent its astral projection into his room to visit him and perched down uh, by his head uh, as he lay down and it began whispering uh, the mystical teachings of Bottlenose into his ear. And according to his account, he said it sounded like And we think his brain must have interpreted it or whatever because he said that he woke up feeling refreshed the next day and he was wondering what these things were that he was thinking about. And that's when he said he received a, he, he received what he noticed was a glowing paw print in his mind. Um, so then in the subsequent days that followed this event, uh, Johannes McGillicuddy didn't think there was anything wrong with, with what happened uh, that one night. So he starts sharing the story of his experience with people that lived in his village. And um, he started telling people that this mystical owl um, appeared in his room and uh, taught him the mystery of diamonds. And keep in mind, this is 500 years ago, so if you think that, that Johannes McGillicuddy is mentally disturbed now, well, imagine what people, imagine what people would have thought 500 years ago, you know, in Europe, you know. Um, I mean, they, they, just to put it mildly, they thought he was fucking nuts. I mean, like, okay, we just think that he just might need some medication, but... They thought that he was possessed by the devil. I mean, because understand the ideological climate um, and socio-political uh, climate that existed in, in you know, freaking 1500s or 1600s um, uh, Europe. And so they thought he was possessed by the devil. They thought he was teaching whatever kind of weird stuff that was harmful to society. And there was a big scandal that happened. And they just, I mean, they, they, they were just desperate to, to just erase this guy from history. And they hoped that nobody would remember him or what he taught or what he stood for and that sort of thing. And it's only through the work, the, the effort and the diligence um, and the adventures of the Soli brothers, spelled S-O-L-I, um, it's, it's only through their efforts. Uh, the Sully brothers, uh, their names were Botner, spelled B-H-A-T-N-R, and the other one was named... So this vehicle passes. The other one was named Babenard, B-E-H-B-N-A-R-D. Uh, their last name was Soli, S-O-L-I. Uh, they came from, you know, an eastern place where, you know, the surname, the family name, comes first. Uh, Soli Botner and Soli Babenard... Um, they, uh, they basically traveled the world, especially Central Asia, um, you know, um, and, and, and Europe, trying to find out the origins of this person, Johannes McGillicuddy, and really, really portray him the way he really was, and not the way people wanted to see him just because of how they felt about things. So this is almost 10 minutes for this video. I think it's June 2nd right now. It's early June of 2014. And um, 
So I'm just going to leave you with this video. Hope you enjoy uh, the YouTube channel and the things that we're going to teach and explain and this sort of thing because it's very fascinating uh, and it's really neat. So uh, enjoy.